seated. You can be seated. Take your Bible this morning, if you will, open to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, if you will. Hope you have your Bible. You'll open it up and follow along with us as we read and study the Word of God. Uh, ask the Lord what to preach. And been working on this message for about three weeks, all right? Amen. And, uh, man, I hope it's a good one, okay? I'd hate to think it's been three weeks and it'll be a dud, all right? So I hope it'll be good. I hope you'll pay attention on purpose this morning. Uh, man, thinking about uh, and his tongue, songs our tongues employ. Amen. You know, uh, how, what a precious name there is of Jesus, yes, but sir. how much more precious he is. How much more precious he is. And I, I hope that your singing is about him. Amen. And not just on Sunday, okay? Right. But throughout the week. You know, uh, I, uh, I I know, I, I have no idea how many hundreds of songs that I know. I have uh, made it an effort to learn a lot of goofy songs. <laughs> Amen, brother. Yeah. Because it's fun to know right. a goofy song. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, I heard years ago little Jimmy Dickens sing, May the Bird of Paradise Fly Up Your Nose. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was moved by that song, so I learned that, and I can sing it. And uh, not necessarily as good as old Jimmy Dickens, but <clears throat> I, I know the words to that song. And, uh, you know, I, I know the words to the song, Too Old to Cut the Mustard Anymore, all right? Now, the bad thing is it's more appropriate now, but I've known that song for 30, 20 or 30 years, all right? And uh, so... I know that, and, and uh, uh, years ago, Mrs. Franzio's son introduced me to a song, it's kind of a song recitation of Mr. Custer, all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, it is a, a wonderful, worthless uh, tune, but I do yeah. like it, and uh, it's a story and sung by a soldier wow. with General George Armstrong Custer, you know, mm -hmm. and... Uh, those of you that know anything about yeah. history, remember what happened to him, okay? Right. So I know a lot of songs. You say, what has that got to do with the message? Nothing, all right? Okay. But I do say this. I am going to speak to you on about the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. all right? Amen. And what he's done for us and what he did when he was here. And uh, I, we sing about all kinds of goofy stuff, all right? Uh, we sing about all kinds of goofy stuff. I think it'd be great if God's people would employ our tongues in singing about Him and, instead about all the goofiness. So if you have your Bible in Ephesians chapter 2, I want to begin reading in verse 11. And if you don't have your Bible, would you just listen on purpose this morning to the Word of God? Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. What a terrible situation Amen. that is to wow. be in. I was that way, though, years ago. Yes, sir. But man, look at verse 13. But Amen. now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh, notice, by Amen. the blood of Christ. Amen. For he is our peace, who hath, broke, hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, yes, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments concern, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself in, of twain one new man, so making peace. Amen. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Amen. And came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit Amen. unto the Father. Amen. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints Amen. and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone yes. in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are builded together 
for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, for what it tells us and what it reveals to us of you and your plan for man. We ask now, Lord, you'd bless today. Help me uh, to preach and to say what you won't said this morning. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, the greatest man who ever lived <clears throat> is the man, Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, folks, uh, the person in second place is so far back that it doesn't matter. All right? Amen. It's not a close race. Now, I realize when I was a teenager, or shortly after my teenage years, there was this fellow, uh, an infidel by the name of John Lennon, that oh, yeah. made the statement that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus Christ. Right. Now, depending upon how you measure popularity, I guess that possibly was true. But it doesn't make any difference. The greatest man who ever lived is Jesus Christ. I mean, nobody else uh, lived that made such an impact and changed the world the way that he changed the world. I want you to think about it a little bit. When the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, after he lived and after he died, he changed the world completely. Today, we measure time based on him. We measure time. Now, I realize uh, that... Uh, in our day, that they used, they they kind of changed this thing up. But it used to be A.D. and B.C. All right, right. and uh, B.C. was before Christ. A.D. stood for Anno Domini, which means in the year of our Lord, and it is after His death, as we often say. So we measure time based on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, right. He, not only did He change life, but He changed life for the better. Right. Listen, if there's anybody, if any group right here this morning that ought to rejoice and be grateful that the Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth, it ought to be all you Amen. ladies. Amen. Because you talk yes, about somebody sir. elevating the position of women, he did that. Right. He did that. Uh, we, we can go around the world. You go around the world. You go to a place where Christianity has never had an impact, and a woman's basically another piece of property. Right, right. Right. She's right. not much above the donkey. Right. Right. Uh, uh, the Muslim religion does not elevate women. No. But I tell you what, Christianity does. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ made the difference, all right? Hey, he changed the course of history. And if you'll let him, he'll change the course of your history. Yes, don't right. Right. If you'll just right. let him do it. I want you to look with me this morning out of these verses we've read. And I want you to notice that it's uh, the last phrase there, that last, uh, really the last two prepositional phrases in verse 13, where the Bible says, by the blood of Christ, mm -hmm. by the blood of Christ. Now I want you to look a minute what the Lord has done and what the Bible tells us that he did when he was on this earth. First of all, look there in verse 14, the Bible says he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down yes, the sir. middle wall of Amen. partition between us. Yes. Now, the Apostle Paul was writing here at church at Ephesus. And these folks were Gentiles, okay? Yeah, right. These folks were Gentiles. Mm -hmm. That's what we are. Right. Yes, sir. Before we got saved, all right? Amen. We're Gentiles. Now, I... The, and he's talking to them, and he's talking to them about their relationship with the Jews and the Jews' relationship to them, okay? Uh -huh. he, he's talking mm -hmm. about that. And what he tells them is that uh, our Lord, when he was here, he broke down that middle wall of partition between the Jew and the Gentile. Uh -huh. Now, we look at that and we say, what's that? Well, hey, we're talking about symbolically, if you will, right. or, or, or there was a, he alluded to this wall that was in the temple area. Right. Right. And it separated the area from the court where the Gentiles were allowed to be uh -huh. from the area where only the Jews could enter. Right. And the Bible said what God did in the person of Jesus Amen. Christ Amen. is he came down and he removed that wall right. which separated Jew and Gentile. But wait a minute. Hear me now. It's more than just a physical wall, okay? Amen. It's more than just that. And there, he, he took out that wall of discrimination, that wall of pride, and that wall of hatred yes. that existed between those folks. Man, I, I mean, 
Uh, he, he removed it. He put it out of the way. Uh, though the barriers between people have been removed by the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? There's no longer room for that kind of hatred, that kind of jealousy, that kind of anti-Semitism. It's just not there based on anything that ought not to be there. But now here's the sad fact. In our day, uh -huh. it still exists. Right. Yeah. It still exists. Wait a minute. Amen. It's not just between them. Right. Toby and Alyssa, don't make me come down there, okay? I can stand in that pew and preach if I have to. <laughs> Y'all quit acting like little kids. Amen. Goodness. Reach back there and slap them. Hey, listen to me. Here's the problem. In our day, it's not just that. I'm amazed at how people today hate each other. Yes, sir. Right. Hey, Jew and Gentile got nothing to do with right. it. Right. You say, well, it's all about race. No. Have you, have you, how many times have you heard on, heard on television news somebody cut somebody off on the freeway and the guy that got cut off shot and killed him? Right. Yeah. Right. Because you got cut off on the freeway? Right. Crazy. Man. man, what's wrong with us? Amen. Yeah, we live in a day, listen, the Lord destroyed the barriers. Yes. But what we do is we put them back up. Mm -hmm. We put them back up. We figure out a way to hate somebody else. Hmm. We figure out a way to despise them. We figure out a way to, to, to envy. We figure out a way to try to move against them. We figure out a way to try to attack them. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take much excuse in our world now, huh? Right. You cross me. You said something about me on Facebook when we start a Facebook war. <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? Or we tweet each other to death. Yeah. You know, I, it's, hey, listen, there's something wrong with us. Amen. Something wrong with us. The thing that's wrong with us is this thing called sin. Right. Yeah. But right. wait a minute. Jesus Christ, we need to remember this. He removes that. Praise the Lord. Yes, he, he removes that wall. And what you and I need to recognize is it's gone. Right. We've got no reason to go through and to hate and to be jealous. And I, I hope you're not guilty. Amen. I hope you're not guilty. God help us to be what we need to be. Yes. Amen. Hey, he removed that wall. But wait a minute, that's not all. Look, if you will, look in verse 16. The Bible says that he might reconcile both Amen. unto God yes. in Amen. one body by the cross. Amen. Having slain the enmity yes, thereby. Hey, our Lord Jesus Christ reconciled man yes. to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. He reconciled man. How do it? By the cross. Right. By the cross. Listen, it took the cross to span the gulf between God and man. Yes, sir. There's that enmity between us. It, it broke out yonder in the Garden of Eden right. uh, about 6,000 years ago. <clears throat> Because man said, I'm going to do what I want to do. Right. I'm, I can't, I, I'm, God's given me everything. He gave me one rule. I'll break that rule. Yeah, sure it is. That's right. Now, now we look at that and we think, boy, how can they do it? How do we do what we do? Right. Come on, great, brother. That's right. Have you ever noticed people? You ever watch people? Amen. Put up a sign, do not touch. <laughs> That's the first thing we want to do. And your hand will come out. Oh, yeah. Right. And seek to touch it. Yep. Years ago, we were at an uh, 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 art gallery in, in Fort Worth with a group from our Christian school. I mean, it's nearly 40 years ago. It was a long time ago. I'll never forget it. There was this piece of sculpture. It had a sign, big sign, do not touch. We're walking along. I turned back just in time to see one of my students. <laughs> well, just something about it. Sign, stay off the grass. we got to cut across. Yeah. Just something about it. Amen. You know, wet paint. What do you do? <laughs> well, it is wet. <laughs> well, they said it was. Right, right. I mean, we're crazy. It's just something in us. That old rebelliousness, that old sin. Right. That creates that enmity between God and man. Mm. But what God did in the person of Jesus Christ Amen. is he reconciled God yes. to man. He destroyed that enmity, all right? Even, uh, you know, all that's there, he, he destroyed it. He took care of it. He's the only one that could ever do it, all right? 
because he's the only one that is able to mediate between God and man. Amen. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, there's one mediator between God and right. man, and it's the man Christ Jesus. Amen. He's the only mediator that's there. Now, you understand the mediator. A mediator is a person that understands both sides. Right. Right. Amen. right? He understands both sides. Now, I could not mediate... Uh, a discussion and a disagreement between a billionaire, mm. all right, and a pauper. No. I only understand one side. <laughs> right. Okay, only understand one side. Right. I don't know what it's like to be a billionaire. I have no idea. Hey, wait a minute. I couldn't mediate between you and God. Right. right. No way. Uh -uh. Because I know your side. Right. But I don't know his side. No, sir. Don't know his side. So what God did, he knew about that enmity between us. So what he did is he sent his son yes. that could mediate because he knew what it was like to be God. Right. But the Bible said he took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men, and he became, and, and being <clears throat> found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto Amen. death. He Amen. knew what it was like to be a man. He knew what it was like to be tempted. He knew what it was like to face everything that you and I face. And so now he's able to mediate between God and man. And the Bible said he ever liveth to make intercession for us. He's there seated at the right hand of God pleading our case. Right. Pleading our case. If the devil comes along and says, man, kill him. The Lord can say, no, he belongs to me. Amen. He's mine. You can't. <laughs> He's mine. Hey, listen. He is the one who came to reconcile God and man. Now, I want you to don't lose your place here in Ephesians, but go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, would you? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is important. You see this verse, all right? The Bible says here, uh, and he, the Bible told us there in Ephesians that he's reconciled us, all right, to God. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, Here's what the Bible says here. Now then, ye are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Amen. Hey, I want to ask you something. <clears throat> he came. Right. He came mm -hmm. to reconcile God to man. We're commanded to be reconciled to God, but are you? Right. Are right. you? I almost want to ask the question this way. Have you buried the hatchet? Amen. Are you good. still holding the grudge against God? That's good. You say, what in the world are you talking about, Richard? Hey, people do it all the time. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Something happens in their life and right. they think God take, took them on and personally did it to right. them. Hey, wait a minute. He came. He did everything he could for us. And now you blame something on him. Uh-huh. Something maybe you don't understand. You can't figure out how it happened or why it happened. And you said, I just can't get Why would God do that? Wait a minute. Why don't you just relax and wait and see what God's doing? Amen. Why don't you just wait and see what God's doing? Mm -hmm. I've seen people get mad but when everything got started and they didn't figure, hey, you know what? Somebody's trying to do good for them. Mm -hmm. Hey, be ye reconciled to God. Jesus came, all right? He removed that wall that separated people. He came to reconcile folks to God. But that's not all. Would you look there in verse 17? The Bible says, talking about him, he came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Amen. Hey, our Lord, when he came, he came to reveal some great truths to us. Hmm. One of those things he revealed to us is that we can have peace. Right. Yeah. Now Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 21 Amen. says, There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Amen. Right. But the Lord came and he preached peace, all right, to you which were far off. Amen. Now he didn't preach something that you couldn't have. Amen. Right. He didn't do that. Now that's what some neighbor kid did to you Amen. when you were little. They came out, you know, one of them big deluxe size lollipops. Oh, yeah. And they had right. it, and you didn't, and they made right. sure you knew they had it, and you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Look what I got. You can't have it, though. Yeah. 
I mean, you ever watch people act like that? Uh -huh. I always like to pick at kids and ask them. I always like to talk to kids. Kids are, you know, uh, at, at church, they'll be coming out and they'll have a sack. And uh, sometimes I know those Sunday school teachers will put candy in there. And I'll say, hey, what you got in the sack? And I'll have them open it up and I'll look in and there's candy. I said, oh, can I have some of that? I just <laughs> want to see if they'll be willing to give it. Right. Now, some of the kids go, nope. <laughs> now, don't pick on them. That probably could have been me when I was that age, yeah, all right? Right, right. But I do enjoy the kid every now and then will come out and say, here you go. All right, amen. Yesterday, we were at the youth rally. Mm. Ashley's sister uh, won a prize. Anna, wasn't it Anna that won that prize? Where are you, uh, Anna? Okay, Anna won this prize. She came back and, and they, she went up to get it and there was a stocking about this tall and had a bunch of junk in it. And oh. when she came and sat down, I said, any chocolate in it's mine. <laughs> All right. Bless her heart. In a minute or two, here she comes back, two candy kisses. She's handing them over wow. the pew. Amen. So, no, I was just kidding. I just want to see if you're willing. All right. All right. Just want to see if you're willing. Hey, listen, uh, the Lord didn't preach peace and say to you, let me tell you about something you can't have. Amen. No, he said, listen, because of me, you can have peace. Right. You can have peace. That's right. He preached peace unto them that were afar off. Why? Well, it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Peace is available, all right? Hey, the, uh, the peace of God was made available to man. Mm -hmm. We can have the peace of God and thereby have peace with God. Right. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Peace. A songwriter said, peace, peace, wonderful yes, sir. peace. It is, it is. You can have peace. You know what it's like? You know what it's like to not have peace? Mm -hmm. You know what it's like to be stressed out? Right. Mm. We talk about that a lot nowadays. Man, I'm just stressed out. Right. Hey, listen, you can have peace. Mm -hmm. You can have peace. The Lord's made it available. Jesus said, my peace. I give unto you. Mm -hmm. Hey, he, he offers us peace. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord Jesus Christ came, you and I, we can have peace with God. Uh, one songwriter said it this way, nothing between my soul and the Savior. Why? Peace with him. Mm -hmm. Peace with him. Everything's forgiven. Everything's forgiven. Everything's under the blood. Yeah. Everything's under the blood. I can come to him and boy, I can have peace. I sat down with a group of kids at school on Friday, and I said, all right, Thanksgiving coming around, I want to ask you something. What is the one thing you're most grateful for? One thing you're most grateful for. Mm. And it was kind of interesting in that conversation, the different things different ones said. Uh, and it was interesting that one, one boy, he couldn't think of what it was. He couldn't think of anything. <laughs> now, I have to tell you something. Here's the problem. That one guy, he gets everything he wants. But it's amazing. He couldn't think of one thing he was most thankful for. Mm. I tell you, I don't know what you're thankful for, but I am so thankful God saved my wretched yes, soul. Sir. Amen. I'm so glad he saved me. Yes. What a blessing it is. I, mm -hmm. Nothing am I more thankful for than I am for the fact he saved me. Because he saved me, I got peace. Yes. Right. Listen, I don't know what it was like before you got saved. I can tell you what it was like before I got saved. God was dealing with me. Yes, sir. Boy, I mean, conviction was Amen. working on me. I, I'd lay down at night and couldn't sleep. Right. Wait a minute. I was nine years old. Yeah. Nine years old. Couldn't sleep. Why? I was afraid to go to sleep. I was afraid the rapture would come and right. I'd be left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was even trying to figure out in my mind, okay, what am I going to do if that takes place? Wow. Yeah. I think about that. Nine years old trying to figure out how you're going to survive seven years of tribulation period. Hmm. See, I knew about that stuff. That's what we were studying in Sunday school. Right. I was paying attention. <clears throat> and I knew his law. said, why didn't you get saved? Same reason you didn't get saved the first time you knew right. you needed to. All right? Amen. Amen. Boy, but I tell you what, that Sunday night I got saved. Yes, sir. That night. Changes peace. everything. Amen. Peace. You got that peace today. You could have it. He came and revealed to men peace. That's not all. Look back down there. We could talk a long time about that peace, but notice what verse 18 says. For through him we both have access right. Right. by one spirit unto the Father. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, listen. When our Lord came, not only did he reconcile God and man, all right, not only did he remove the wall, but he revealed to us we've got access to God. Yes, sir. You remember when Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross? And, and uh, the Bible said he gave up the ghost, and the Bible said the veil in the temple and was rent in twain from right. top to bottom. Right. Yeah. So what's that all about? Well, that veil represented uh, a, a situation where man could not go any further. Right. And it separated the holy place from the holy of holies in the temple. Right. And that holy of holies is where the Ark of the Covenant was. I'll remind you, that Ark was so, so holy that if a man touched it, yes, God would kill him. Right. And he did in the Scripture. Yes, sir. Guy reached out, it was on a cart, never should have been on the cart. Right. But it was on a cart, and they were moving it, and that cart, the ox stumbled, the cart shuffled a little bit, and that guy looked, said the ark's gonna fall off, and he reached out to steady it, and God killed him. Yes, sir. He said, How can he do that? That was a holy thing. Amen. That's where it was said. It sat in the Holy of Holies in the temple. And there was a great veil that was several inches thick of woven cloth. <coughs> and the only person that went inside that Holy of Holes was the great high priest. Mm -hmm. And he'd go in once a year to take the blood of the atoning sacrifice to sprinkle it on the mercy seat on that, whole, that Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. Man, uh, it, you, you were careful as a priest. Oh, they yeah. had bales on the bottom of their robe. Yeah. So as long as they heard the bale, they knew you were moving. If they that bale stopped and it didn't ring for a good while, they knew God killed the fellow that came in there. Right. But that day when Jesus died, that veil was ringing. Amen. Amen. You know why? Because it signified we've got access directly yes. to God right. Right. by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We can come directly into the yeah. throne room right. and come to him. Hebrews says, let us come boldly right. mm -hmm. under the throne of grace. Hey, that we can find mercy, we find grace to help in time of need. Yeah. Why, we can come. You don't have to come through me. You don't have to go through a priest. Right. You don't have to go through any other man. You can go Amen. Amen. straight to God yes. because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, I want to ask you something. Do you have that peace today? Right. He revealed that peace was available. Do you have that peace? Mm -hmm. Amen. Hey, how much do you time do you spend in the throne room with God? Do you take advantage of that? It's only in emergency situations. Mm -hmm. How much time do you spend there? The Lord revealed we have access directly unto the mm -hmm. God the Father. Hey, well, wait a minute. That's not all he did. <clears throat> Look there at verse 19 in Ephesians chapter 2. Boy, this is wonderful. What a wonderful truth. Now, therefore, we are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens yeah. of the saints and of the household of God. Right. Hey, our Lord reunited man. Hallelujah. He reunited yes, man. We're no more strangers and foreigners. Go back up, if you will. Verse 12. Remember, he's speaking to the Gentiles. He said, at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. But boy, we get down to verse 19, he said, we're no more strangers and foreigners. Why? Because of the blood of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Right. If you've trusted him as your savior, he's reunited. Uh, that What a blessing that now we, through the blood of our savior, our fellow citizens, the Bible said, with the household of God. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful group to be in. Our citizenship is out of this world. Amen. Amen. I hold today dual citizenship. I am a citizen of the United States of America, but I'm also a citizen of heaven. Yes, sir. Amen. I've got that dual citizen. We can now have fellowship with God. We can now have fellowship with others in the family. What a wonderful thing it is to be able to do that, to fellowship with the people of God. Man, I, I, I love gathering together in the house of God to fellowship with God's people. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, good, wonderful people to be around. Yes. I've got some family members by blood that I just as soon not see. Right. Y'all right. got any kid folks like that? Sure. Sure. 
you know, I've got some, it's okay. I haven't seen them in years. And that's okay. Right. I just didn't care for them. Mm -hmm. They probably didn't like me. And that's okay too, yeah. all right? But I tell you what, I like to get together with the, the family of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What a wonderful group it is to get with, together with. Man, you, you know, when you get together, you ever been in family gatherings where you, you just felt like you had walking on eggshells? <laughs> Be careful, I don't want to offend anybody. No, you gotta watch out. Yeah. Say the wrong thing, look the wrong way, and there's an explosion. <laughs> I'm not gonna say which side of the family, but when my brother and I were kids, one, one of the families, we'd get together maybe at Christmas or something like that, and I guarantee you, there was always a rift between some of the sisters. <laughs> okay, there always was. There was always something stirred up. Something happened, and some of them got huffy. Right. Got their feelings hurt. Right. <laughs> and man, there was trouble. <clears throat> you know. Now all the cousins, we got along fine. If we had a problem, we just fight it out, and get there over, it, go on. Right. You know. Yeah, they couldn't do that though. All right. <laughs> Hey, I, I like getting together with the family of God. There, there's not any of that. Right. Amen. No, not any of that. And this is a good. Uh, I love this family Amen. right here. Yes, sir. Yes. This family, this this fellowship Amen. with the Amen. members of First Baptist Church. You folks right here, I love the fellowship right. with you. Amen. But I tell you, it's so good sometimes when you go to another church. Yes. Now, on rare occasions, if I'm out of town on Sunday, and it's so good to walk into a church. If I'm on vacation, I always hunt up a church. Yes. Right. And it's always good when you go in and immediately yes. you feel at home. Yes. Right. Yes. What a blessing. Hey, wait a minute. Listen. What are you saying? I'm saying the Lord Jesus reunited man. We're no more strangers. <clears throat> we're no more foreigners. Hey, we're part of the family of God. But wait a minute, one other thing. Would you look at verse 20? Verse 20 says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, yes, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Yes. Hey, wait a minute. You know what else he's done? He's refashioned the building. He's refashioned the building. He's building a thing called a church. Mm -hmm. All right? He's the chief cornerstone. Amen. Now notice, the Bible said the foundation here is the apostles and prophets. Mm -hmm. You say, what's he talking about? Take your Bible over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Just back up towards the front of your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I think I said chapter 1, but it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want you to notice here, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, once you notice what the Bible says, right? The Word of God. Now, I've always said the Bible interprets itself. Right. And it does. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse 28. And God has set some in the church. See that next word? First, apostles. Right. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Go back to Ephesians chapter 2. You with me? Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Amen. Jesus Christ being mm -hmm. the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, when our Lord came to this earth, he started something. He started something called a church. Right. Now, I don't believe for a minute that the church started on the day of Pentecost. No. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible in chapter 2 of Acts says the Lord added to the church right. on that day. Right. right. About 3,000. Mm -hmm. But you have to have something before you can add to it, okay? Right, right. You have to have something before you can add to it. All right, so there was something there before, and it started with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord started the church, and he started it with the apostles, the fellow we refer to as the disciples, all right? Mm -hmm. Those fellows, John and Peter and Andrew and James, and those guys, he started the church with those fellows. That's a foundation. And then well, they've been added to all along the way, all right? The foundation was laid with them. Jesus Christ 
was the chief cornerstone, and all along the way, because he came, he's refashioned the building, all right? And he's allowed us to get together. And the Bible says, in whom all the building fitly framed together. Right. He put us there. Right. He's Amen. put us in that building, all right? And, and each one has a place, and each one has a purpose. The Bible in 1 Corinthians talks about the church being a body. A body, and each member of that body is important. Right. And, and nobody can look around and say, I'm more important than you are. Right. You know, there is something in human beings that people like to, for lack of a better way to say it, they like to strut their stuff. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I found out a lot of people that strut their stuff don't have much stuff to strut. <laughs> all right. Amen. But right. God put you in the church, and he said there's a place for you. Yeah. Right. And there's a purpose for you. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose for you. Hey, Brother Ms. Altry and their daughter, man, they're sick today. Hey, they were missed in the choir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Right. They were missed in the choir. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's a purpose. God has a purpose for you in your life. We're a part of that building. Fitly framed together. And I tell you what, you go around knocking out posts from under a building... And before long, the whole thing's going to collapse. Sure will. <coughs> It'll fall in. Mm -hmm. But you see, the Lord put all of us there, and he's put us there for a purpose. He's refashioned that building. There's nothing in the world like a church. Nothing in the world like a church. Right. It operates differently. It stands differently. God put it here. It has a different purpose than anything else in the world. You're a part of that. You're saved. <coughs> you ought to be a part of it. And then notice what the Bible says, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. <coughs> a habitation of God. You're the place where God lives. God doesn't live in this building. But if you're saved, He lives in you. Yes, sir. He lives in you. Right. You're a part of that. Through the Spirit, we're an habitation for God. I just want to ask you, how active a part do you play in that building? I've heard a lot of people say, well, I do what I can, when they really weren't telling the truth. You know, be careful about saying, well, I do what I can. Well, do you do what you should, all right? How active a part? Would it exist very long if everybody participated the way you did would it last you see God put us together he's the one that fitly framed everything together I want you to look at that today five things the Lord Jesus Christ did while he was here on this earth all right uh, five things he did and, and he removed the wall now are you putting them back up are you putting them back up he reconciled God and man, but are you reconciled unto God? Mm. Yeah. Are you reconciled unto Him? Hey, He revealed some things to us. He revealed that we can have peace, but do you have peace? Mm. Do you have that peace? He's the one that reunited man. He's made us where we can fellowship together with God and the people of God. But wait a minute, do you do that? Hey, he's refashioned the building. But how much involved in that are you? A lot of times I give the message a title. And oftentimes, most of the time, I tell you the title at the beginning. I'm going to tell you the title of this message today at the end. And the title of it is, He Did, But Did You? Hmm. Now, he did it. Well, what have you done with what he did? I mean, he did, but did you do anything with what he did? Yeah. He's made it available, but have you availed yourself of what he's made available? Are you involved in that which he put here? Or are you taking advantage of the status that you hold because of him and because of what he did? Are you taking advantage of that? Yeah. Are you on the outside somewhere over here? When you should be on the inside. 
Are you enjoying the great fellowship with God? Are you reconciled to Him? Or do you find yourself alienated from Him and the people of God? Well, you don't have to be. If you are, it's your fault. It's not God's fault. It's your fault. Look what He's done. Look what He's done. Now, what have you done with it? Would you bow your heads this morning? Every head bowed, never eye closed. Oh my, look what He's done for us. And He did it for us, and He did it all for our benefit. And you and I can enjoy the fruit of all that he's done. But are we enjoying? Are we taking full advantage of it? The sad fact, maybe you're here this morning and his blood was shed for you, but you've never called on him and asked him to save you. So this morning, you're lost in your sin. Oh, you may have made some charade of getting saved. You may have at some point in life just to appease somebody else or because it seemed like your friends were doing it. You say, I'll just get involved. But wait a minute, how real is it to you this morning? You've really been born again. God make the change in your life. If he did, then how much are you showing it in the way you do? Hey, all the things he's provided, are you enjoying it this morning? Maybe you need to come. Maybe you need to trust Him as your Savior. Maybe you need to come and ask forgiveness. Maybe you put some walls back up the Lord took down. Maybe you've got offended. Maybe you've offended others. Maybe you need to ask forgiveness. Well, whatever the need is this morning, I pray you do it. Heavenly Father, I pray now this morning we'd use the invitation time as you've spoken to our heart. We'd use the invitation time, Lord, to get right with you, to repent of sin. Lord, to come and say, Lord, I'm going to remove that wall I've been building up. Maybe between another individual. Maybe they've built a wall between you and them. Lord, uh, some folks don't have the peace they ought to have what they could have. Lord, I pray that you'd deal with each and every one of us right where we live. Help us to do today an invitation what you want us to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.